Hello everyone. Today we will be focusing on YouTube. You will learn how to access your channel, have your channel gain video viewing approval for students through Bossier Parish School Board, find a video on a topic that you teach, have that video get approval, make a playlist of videos, and learn a few tips and tricks for YouTube Studio. So let's begin with accessing your channel. If you'll notice, there's a picture right up here. That's my icon for my Google account. And if you click on the icon, yours may have a picture, yours may have an initial, you see where it lists your channel. So I want you to go ahead and click your channel. Now, your channel may not look like this, and that is perfectly fine. You'll probably have at most maybe one or two videos listed. But let's look at how to change the settings on your channel. If you scroll down over here on the left, you have settings. Now, you have your account settings. And those basically just show that this is your YouTube channel, uh, shows information about your personal account. Then you have notifications. Now, this is a location that you probably want to personalize. Right now I have my subscriptions set for notifications. I don't want to be recommended any videos. I don't want to receive an email about that or a desktop notification. Um, any activity on my channel I want to know about, activity on my comments, replies to my comments I want to know about, as well as any content of mine that is shared on others' channels. And if you look at playback and performance, again, you can personalize those. Those aren't as important. Uh, privacy settings. I went ahead and unprivated my playlists because that way my students can access them if they need to watch certain things. Don't really worry about um, connected accounts. Don't need to do that at all. Uh, watching on TV is only if you want to project it to an actual TV screen rather than a smart board or a Promethean board. Billing and payments we don't worry about. In advanced settings, that's actually part of your URL, but we're going to talk about that in a second when we get ready to have school board approval. Speaking of school board approval and your channel, due to a problem with YouTube itself, the school board has to manually approve all videos and channels that your students watch through YouTube. Oftentimes, if you assign a video for a student to watch, you're able to see it on your teacher account, but they're not able to see it on their student account. It says that they don't have access. So the very first thing you need to do when you get ready to have students view content on your channel is to make sure that your channel is approved. Now, if you look up here, where I have youtube.com channel, blah, 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 blah. And then you have that question mark view as subscriber. What you're going to do instead is you're going to click right before that question mark and highlight your the remainder of the URL. And I always use the keystrokes, control C for copy. Then we're going to open up another tab Go to bossierschools.org. We're going to click on departments, select technology, and then scroll down until you see this button that says technology department information. 
contacts, guides, forms, etc. Because you're going to need to fill out this form every time you need a video from YouTube or a channel approved. Even if you save a video to your playlist and your playlist appears on your channel, unless that video or the channel that originated that video came from is approved already, students will not be able to view that video. Then you're going to go to the YouTube video approval request form. And it's a Google form. And it says, before submitting this form, you must view the channel and or its video in its entirety and verify that it is, it is appropriate for the educational purpose intended. Now, it says, please allow at least 24 hours for approval. Connie Miller with the technology department is the person who approves these. And she tries to approve them as quickly as possible because it floods her inbox every time one or more requests happen. So in this case, we are having a channel approved. Now the beauty of having an entire channel approved is that any videos you post to your channel that you create and upload will automatically be approved. The same happens if you ask for a channel of content to be approved rather than the individual videos. If you ask for the channel of content to be approved, every video in that channel is approved. Whereas if you ask for a particular video to be approved, only that video in that channel is approved. So here we're asking for our entire channel to be approved. So you're going to paste the link, control V, right click, however, whichever way you're most comfortable with and choose paste. And you can do that for up to four videos on your request form. Any more than that, you have to open another request form. Now, in my case, it is for ELA, subject or standards, and the school is Plain Dealing High School. So we're gonna let it all kind of hang out there. Select Plain Dealing. And then you type your first and last name as your signature, indicating that you've gone through all of the process of viewing it. It's appropriate for the educational purpose it is intended. So you go ahead and then you click Submit. And it says your response has been recorded. So let's go back to YouTube and learn a few more things about YouTube. The next thing we're going to do is we're gonna go back to the YouTube home button. That's the one that says YouTube and has the YouTube symbol in front of it. We're going to click on that and search for a video that contains content that you will be teaching. In two of my classes, fairly quickly once the school year begins, I'm going to be having students read Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. So I'm going to do a search and see if there is any content related to Fahrenheit 451. Please keep in mind that as you look for content, it needs to be content that the content creator, the channel owner, has permission to create or to post. Uh, so for example, if we're talking about HBO, who owns the Fahrenheit 451 movie that was made recently, they have permission to post the official trailer on their channel. But when you're talking about students who are people who post audiobook versions that are sold and they're not the person who owns the audiobook version, that is not something you want to seek approval for. So if you notice right here, you have part one of the audiobook. You don't want to do that. However, if you look at why should you read Fahrenheit 451, it's a TED Ed piece, that's something that you could look into. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to click on the video that you find. Scroll down to where it says share. 
and comes up with the link and you want to copy the link. So when you go back to get the video request form, you would again copy that link in the request form. Or if you go to the TED Ed channel, you might find other videos that you want to include that could be useful in your classroom. And so you would want to copy the channel as we did before and paste it into the Google form. Now, another thing, if you notice when it talks about sharing, when you click on share, notice it says start at zero, zero. You can actually choose to share content starting at a point in a certain point in the video. So this video is four minutes long, but let's say I want to start it at one minute and 35 seconds. So change that to 135. And then when I share the clip with my students or I share it for approval, it is simply the point at which I want them to begin viewing it especially for videos that are 30 minutes, 45 minutes long, and you only want them to view maybe the last five or six minutes of it, that's how you would want to share it. It reduces the amount of time that students would take to scrub through a video to a certain point. Now, let's say you want to make a playlist that includes your video. Let's say you're teaching math and you want a playlist that's all about fractions. Or in my case, I would make a playlist for Fahrenheit 451. So over here where it says save, I would click on save. And I already have several playlists. I'm kind of addicted to making playlists on YouTube. But in this case, I would go to create new playlist and I would type in Fahrenheit 451 and I'm going to go ahead and make it public simply in case my students need to access it and so that it will appear in my list of playlists on my channel. I'm going to go here and click create and it says that it's been added to that playlist. Now, if you go back to the channel, look at the channel, and we go to playlists, and there it appears on the Fahrenheit playlist. There's only one video. Knowing me, by the end of the day of looking up information, I'd probably have 85 or 90 videos because, as I said, I'm addicted to playlists. One more area I would like to look at before we move on is YouTube Studio. If you notice right here, the blue YouTube Studio, that's actually where you look at all of the things related to your channel. That's where you make your channel activity. So it has your dashboard. It gives some information about what has happened as far as your particular channel, you know, analytics. But if you go over here to videos, and if you once you upload videos, when you upload the videos, it asks you what privacy setting you want to have. I made a mistake with the videos that I first posted and set them to private or unlisted and when I went to look at my channel they weren't there and I was very upset by that. So through quite a bit of trial and error I managed to find this particular page. Now if you notice I set all of the visibility to public because I do want them to show up when my students need to access them through the channel or if somebody else needs to access them through the channel. If you set them to private, even if the person has the link, they cannot view the video. So it is important that you either set it to unlisted 
if you don't want it to show up on your channel but you do want people to access it or set it to public so that it shows up on your channel. Now I only have four videos listed. I'm going to have more by the time everything starts for the year. But let's say you want to upload a video. What would be the process for that? So to upload a video, we would go to create, upload videos, and we'd go to select files. Now earlier today, I went ahead and uploaded, well actually downloaded a video to my Chromebook that I will now upload into YouTube. And the name of that video is samplevideo.mov. I'm going to go ahead and click open and then it will upload the video. It'll take just a few seconds to upload it. Notice it's already got the title, sample video, and I will now put my description. This is a sample video. If you notice down here where it talks about processing, it's 95% processed. We'll go ahead and click next. It's already set a link for us right here. And it's finished processing now, so it shows up with my picture. Now it will let me select a thumbnail. We'll, we'll go with the least egregious of them and it'll let you select a playlist. In this case, I'm actually not going to choose a playlist for it. And you'll understand why in a few minutes. Um, it is made for kids. We don't need to worry about any age restrictions or anything like that. And then we're gonna go to next. Normally you'd be able to add an end screen or add cards, but I don't promote content, so I don't have those options available. So we'll click next. And this is the most important screen. We talked about visibility earlier. You want to make sure that your video is visible to the audience you need it to be visible to. If you set it to private, unless you share it with someone, it will not be visible even if they have a link. Unlisted allows someone who has a link to view it, but it will not show up in your channel, on your channel at all. So I'm going to go ahead and set it to public. And then you click publish. And it is now available to be copied. So let's go look 